Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our recorded session today. My name is Pastor Rob Goodman, and I'm the senior pastor at Zion Freedom Fellowship in Maryland of the beautiful United States of America. We want to welcome you all. I have a special guest with me today, my better half, my wife, Pamela Goodman. She's here with me, and we are going to share some testimonies or whatever the Lord might bring to our minds today. I want to welcome you, honey. It's Thank good you. to have you here. Thank and you. Um, I think what we should do is I will go ahead, if you're comfortable with that, to share your testimony first, how you came to the Lord and oh, sure. what came, how it came about and what exactly took place and happened. Well, of course. Hi, everybody. I've seen some of you before, and I'm really very thrilled to be here with my husband, Pastor Rob, because he is such a natural with the camera. I am not, but he is very, very gifted. He's just a people person, so it's really nice because he can just keep things flowing along, and I have the easy part, so I'm very thankful for that. Well, um, so praise God, I was raised Catholic, and uh, I can't say that our family was quite as dedicated as some families were because my mom and dad, my dad was the one who was raised Catholic, my mother mm -hmm. was Methodist, and they actually were both married before they met each other, or they were married and divorced before they met each other. So uh, my mom was not Catholic, and back in, um, I guess it would have been 1960 or 61, you know, it was not considered um, a marriage in the eyes of the Catholic Church unless mm -hmm. both people were, were converted to Catholicism or raised in Catholicism. Now, I don't know if it's that way now. So as a result, my sister and I went to church and my mom and dad usually did not go with us, but they would drop us off and pick us up. And we went through everything, the, uh, the catechism, the First Holy Communion, and mm. the, uh, the church, obviously, and then being confirmed and all of that. And I also went to a Catholic uh, high school, as did my sister. But my brother, who was from my mom's first marriage, he, so he was actually half-brother, but he was our brother. That's how we looked at it. He mm -hmm. was just our brother. He was 10 years older than I was. And uh, it was difficult for him because he was not always with his dad, and his dad was at, in poor health uh, by the time I was like eight or nine or 10 years old, and um, he was a teenager. And um, unfortunately, his dad passed away in 1974. My brother was uh, 20, 19, going on 20, and, uh, or 20. So that was a very hard time for him. Now, my brother, had a born again friend. Now, I didn't know any of this. I was just the, young, the youngest of the family. My sister was three years older than me. And uh, so we didn't know what to expect when one day he came home from church and said that he was born again. And uh, we didn't know what that meant. And we thought, uh oh, you know, now he's become like some kind of crazy religious nut, right? Because we <laughs> didn't know. I had never heard born again before. In, my, uh, in any Catholic sermon, not that I can remember. And um, like I said, we were just Sunday church people and a uh, little more than the, the Easter and Christmas. We definitely tried to go throughout the year, but it was really just me and my sister. And um, you know, we had a reverence for God, so I'm very thankful that my parents had me in church because we had a reverence for God. We understood that he was God mm -hmm. and he was to be reverenced and he was to be, um, you know, treated with respect, and that he was real. We never had any doubt that he was real. So it was really my brother that became born again. And the, I have an image of him in the living room. He knelt down in the living room. My sister's in my room was off the hallway downstairs, and my parents' room on the other side, and my brother's room upstairs. And uh, I remember peeking out and seeing him kneeling by one of the chairs in the living room and praying, and I thought, Oh my gosh, you know, what is this? <laughs> and the funny thing is, yeah, we didn't know what to think. Believe me, my parents did not either. <laughs> but he had truly been born again, and later on he was baptized in the Holy Spirit at some point. But, you know, he was uh, very, I think the Lord was so gracious to get him at a time when his heart was really broken because he was very close to his dad, loved his dad very much, and he was just yeah. getting to the age where he could live with his dad because he had turned 18. He still stayed with us part of the time, but then to have his dad go into poor health and pass away was really hard for him, I think. And thank God in his mercy mm -hmm. that he had this friend and took him to church and my brother was born again. So really, I have to tell you, 
it was that which brought my entire family to Jesus. That was mm. what brought my entire family to Jesus, and I'm so grateful. And uh, the, just a few months later, you know, in the early of 75, I was 10, and um, me and my sister were the dishwashers in the house. We'd, we'd complain to his dad to get dishwashers, and he said, a dishwasher, and he'd say, I already have two, and he'd point to us, you know, <laughs> and that was his little joke. But I'd always leave mine till late at night, and this must have been on Christmas break or something, um, or maybe it was the weekend because I was up a little later than uh, everybody else had gone to bed. So I don't know what time it was. It was probably after seven or eight o'clock. I'm doing the dishes. My brother comes home from one of his, probably a Bible study, I'm guessing, because he was very, very involved in all that stuff. And uh, he was sitting eating his sandwich. I was doing dishes and he opened his Bible and just said, hey, I want to show you something in here. And he started turning the pages and he had, the only Bible we had in the house was a big family Bible. And believe it or not, he got it covered in leather, and that is what he carried around for years, as long That's as I right. can remember. That was a huge Bible. Too. Yeah, you remember it, right? <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, you could drop that on someone's foot and break their foot. <laughs> but that's what he carried around, and it's so precious in my heart that, you know, he was a young believer. It was during the Jesus 70s, Jesus movement, and he was just so uh, in love with Jesus. He didn't care what it yeah. looked like or anything. He didn't either. Yeah, and he would even say to us, we plop stuff on top of it he'd say don't put anything on the bible you shouldn't have anything on the bible and that's not really scriptural but that was his heart he just yeah. felt that the bible was so important so he showed me some verses i don't remember what they were but i do remember i felt something in my heart and i was torn between well do i let let my feelings show because you know i was just embarrassed i was kind of like i didn't want to do this in front of my brother and then he said to me there's a bunch of angels up there right now cheering for you <laughs> and for some reason, that caught my attention because I thought, what? what how do they know about me? How would any angels in heaven <laughs> even know about me it? or, or who beautiful. I was? Why would they even care? And then they're cheering for me? I would be like, what? And so that, to me, somehow made me realize what he was saying was genuine. I know it sounds funny, but, you know, I was only 10. And so that night I, I prayed and asked Jesus into my heart, and I felt after we had gone to bed, everybody, my sister was already asleep, and I brushed my teeth, got in bed, and prayed, and I felt this weight lift off my, mm -hmm. off my heart or off my chest, and then I saw Jesus' face smiling at me, and again, it wasn't vivid, like, oh, what did he look like? I can't really explain, but I just saw his face smiling at me, and I was weeping, and my brother came down and said, did you pray? Did you pray? And I was like, yeah, but he's like, are, are you crying? I'm like, no, no, no. I, I was just thinking about a sad movie I saw today. <laughs> I was just embarrassed. So anyway, but that really exploded the love of God in my heart. Wow, and uh, That's amazing. Yeah, it was really beautiful. And we still continued on in Catholic Church. I didn't learn much about Jesus or how to walk with him. I had really no discipleship. Um, I was really too young to be going to church with my brother, and we were raised Catholic, so we continued to go there. But when I was 17, I had a rededication of my life to the Lord, which really was when my, my spiritual life started. And then about maybe a year after that, I was filled with the Holy Spirit at the Creation Festival uh, in Pennsylvania where our youth group was attending. So at that time, I was at a Presbyterian church. So uh, during all that, that's where I met Rob because you came to one of our, well, actually it was my, my brother who invited us to a Monday night Bible study. There was you know, people there our age, uh, my age actually at that time, which I was, I guess, uh, 17, 18. And uh, we, our uh, Bible study teacher couldn't make it because he was held up at work. And so your friend who t was a Bible teacher and, and yeah. brought you and another yeah. person, and that was when we met. Yeah, so that was how yeah. that happened. So anyway, well, I didn't mean to go around and around, no, but no, no, you no, have yeah, a much yeah. more interesting uh, testimony than well, I do, I think. but every testimony to me is powerful because it testifies of the love of god you know god loves you so much he cares so deeply for you can you imagine just think for a minute you know we just watched a movie the other night uh nate and i finished it off because it was late it was a jesus movie from the 1990s or 1999 or eight or something like that but the cross scene was very vivid when they drove those nails those long nails into jesus wrist and his feet he screamed i mean that man screamed and man the tears were just rolling down my face because i thought lord every time i see that 
I just, I start to weep and cry because the love of God is so real. The love of God changed my life. I mean, literally in a heartbeat, my life was changed. So my testimony is a little bit different than Pam because I started, you know, unfortunately into some not so good things when I was a young kid. My dad, he's no longer here. God bless him. He finally gave his life to the Lord. Amen. A friend of his that he had been friends with for like 30 or 40 some years. They went hunting and fishing together all the time. That this man came down with cancer and a friend of mine, uh, Brother Dan, and I took him down to took Richmond. Where he, yeah, my dad, down to uh, Richmond to visit with him. He lived outside of Richmond, Virginia, um, and it, we left him there for a week, and then we came back and picked him up. Well, when we came back to pick him up, my dad says to me, well, I'm now one of those born-agains. That's what he would always <laughs> tell. He'd say, my son is one of them born-agains. You know, he, he, he knows all, and he would tell my testimony to people. He was your wingman. Yeah, it was really amazing. Man. <laughs> <laughs> kind of funny, you know? But anyway, so what happened to me was, you know, as an early teenager, I started smoking, started smoking pot, probably around, I guess, 15 or 16 in early high school. And, you know, I just always wanted to fit in with people because I was not a very athletic person. I was not, you know... I wasn't very physical. I didn't play a lot of sports because I was a diabetic. Every time I went to play sports, my blood sugar would drop. I had issues. So that made me feel very different than everybody else. And it was very hard back then because you were basically taking one shot to last all day long. Right. So yeah. it was very, very rudimentary and kind of backwards, really, very med much medically so. speaking, compared to now. Yeah. Because you know you if you did any exertion your blood sugar would drop and it was almost like it was impossible really for you to do those things they would make it, it would end yeah, up with very really bad hard. circumstances so really hard yeah it's it was rough it was very rough it was very hard for me to fit in with other people friends sports all that kind of stuff and i kind of withdrew but i still wanted to be you know a part of people i wanted to have friends so that led to an easy entrance into drugs and alcohol. I mean, even in high school, I started smoking dope and drinking beer and, you know, things like that. I even wound up doing, by the time I got out of high school, I was even doing hits of acid, LSD, which was, you know, really, really not good. And, but anyway, praise be to God, by the time I graduated, um... You know, I was like, what is life all about? Why am I here? I was working a job and, you know, just trying to figure everything out. And I just couldn't. I just felt like I didn't fit in, that nobody really understood me. And I was just kind of like a loner. But I did have a couple close friends. And then one night, I was sitting down in the basement of a good friend of mine that we were friends from childhood. And there were a couple other guys there with us sitting down in his basement and we were smoking pot. And all of a sudden I heard an audible voice speak to me, literally an audible voice and said, go home and call Miss Rose. Well, Miss Rose was a former pastor's wife that my aunt used to take me to this um, ministry. It was called Bay, Bay Area Evangelistic Association and I went, went with my aunt when I was really little because, again, I'm being a diabetic. She took me to these Catherine Coleman services. And I probably had been to like three or four of them. Well, the pastor of that church knew her personally. Both her, him and his wife knew her personally and helped her verify miracles in her crusades. And there's actually a, a, a video from 1975 in uh, Las Vegas where it's like about 50, some, maybe an hour long. And I remember at the 58-minute mark, they actually show him on the stage verifying these miracles, which was great to see. But anyway, so I wound up going home, 
and calling her because I heard this voice. It was like earth shattering to me. I, I stood up and everybody looked at me and said, what is wrong with you, Rob? You're white as a ghost. And I said, I can't explain. I got to leave. I got to leave. I got to leave. And out the door I went. And I walked home so quickly, went home, found their phone number, and called them. And it was so funny because <laughs> this was on a, a Thursday night. I remember that specifically. So I called her and got on the phone with her, and she starts laughing. And she says, you remember the last thing I said to you? Now, this woman remembered all this. She was very bold. Yeah. Very bold in yeah. the Lord. Man, I'm telling you, she was like sharp as an arrow, too, as far as spiritual things were concerned. So anyway, she said, do you remember what you said to me? And it came to my mind. She was telling me when I was 12 years old, she was teaching the kids Hebrew. And I thought, what do I want to learn Hebrew for? Now I love Hebrew. You know, it's funny. I guess she planted a seed in my heart at that point. But anyway, so I got up, walked out of the building, and she says, she says, Robbie, where are you going? And I turned around, and I said, you can take your Jesus. And I actually said that to her. And she started laughing. and said, one day you're going to come back to me and want to know more about this Jesus. That was that night. She remembered all of that. So I talked to her probably about a half an hour. She prayed with me, and she says, I want you to come to a Bible study tomorrow, <clears throat> to a Bible study tomorrow evening at like 7 o'clock. And she says, it's at Villa Cresta, and that was right down the street from me. I went to that elementary school, so I knew exactly where it was. She told me the building, we were, uh, the room we were meeting in and all that. So I got there. And the men and women opened up with some songs, and then the men and women would split up and go into separate Bible studies. So I, of course, went with the men, and I'll never forget the assistant pastor, Pastor Bob. He taught that night about Abraham being a friend of God. And, man, that just jabbed me right in the heart because... I kept saying to myself, man, I would love to have God as my friend. I mean, it just pierced me. So the time of the Bible study ended. We went back together, and we began to sing. We stood in a big circle. There's probably maybe 20, 25 people there on a Friday night. And we stood in a big circle, and we held hands and started singing. Probably an Alleluia chorus or something like that. Well... I remember Pastor Pastor Dick, Pastor his name was Richard O'Wellen, but Pastor Dick said, is there anybody here that wants to receive Jesus? And man, I just started bawling. I couldn't stop crying. And he came over to me and he put his hands on me. I went flat on the floor. Well, I didn't know this at the time, but all I saw was this white, ball, it was almost like a white ball of fire that was going up and down my body from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet as I'm laying there on the floor. Well, come to find out afterwards, they said that they were casting out demons out of me, and I was, you know, rolling around on the floor, and I don't remember any of that. But I definitely had demons in my life. Well, that night ended, and I remember walking out the door, and I remember the first person I have to tell is my Aunt Betty, because my Aunt Betty would take me to all kinds of services and things like that, you know, really try and introduce me to the Lord Jesus. And I remember I walked over to her house that night. It's the opposite direction of my house. And went inside, and I told her, I said, Aunt Betty, I have accepted Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. She got the biggest smile on her face, you know. And she kind of like shook her hands, eh, you know, like that. And um, oh, I was just overjoyed. And, of course, that led for my, my cousin Robin and I, who was very, very close, led her to the Lord about a month later. So it was exciting. So my life changed completely. That night... The drug stopped, the drinking stopped, 
there were other things that didn't stop that were deeply rooted in me but you know god deals with us in his time that's right he deals with us in his mercy his mm-hmm. loving kindness his grace like we always sing amazing grace man his mace is a grace is his grace is absolutely amazing mm-hmm. it is life-changing and it will change you forever I don't care what you're struggling with right now. I don't care what you're going through. You know, I went through a long period of pornography and really, really struggled with that and just could not get out of it. But God is faithful. He delivers. He delivers. He sets you free. Jesus said you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. What makes you free? The truth. What and did Jesus? The truth. Amen. The truth. Amen. And what did Jesus say? He said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come unto the Father but by me." That's right. So, there's a scripture I want to share with you as well before we end here tonight. Today, I should say. <laughs> anyway. This is 2 Corinthians 5, and I'm going to start reading at verse 17. I'm going to read down to the very end. And this is, I'm reading out the New King James Version. This is what it says. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, what does it mean to be in Christ? To be born again of the Spirit? To have Christ come into your life? When you become born again, This is what happens to you. Jesus enters into your innermost being. We are a a spirit. We have a soul. We live in a body. And I'm not going to get into all that right now because it would take too long to explain. And when the scripture says heart, if you look at the Greek, it means your innermost being. So there really is an innermost being that he comes to live in. It's really not the physical heart that pumps blood. That's right. It is the innermost being that whether you know it or not is in darkness if you don't know jesus it is in darkness true because um when sin came through adam and eve and people want to say oh that wasn't true or well even genetics tells us that all of the human race came from one man and one woman so isn't that coincidental because that's what the bible says it doesn't matter what names you want to give them because actually they're their name in Hebrew, which I don't know what they spoke at that time. It's been translated to us as Adam and Eve, but it's translated differently in Hebrew. So the main point is that when sin came, Adam and Eve chose to rebel and do, they thought that Satan came and said, you know, the reason God doesn't want you to eat that tree is because he doesn't want you to be like him. He doesn't want you to know what he Mm. knows. He's trying to keep you down. You know, he knows if you eat that, you'll know everything he knows. And And you'll be like God. So Mm -hmm. Satan was lying to them and giving them the impression that God wasn't all loving and all giving, that he was sort of trying to cheat them out of something. That's right. And uh, he appealed to their, um, maybe their ambition or their pride or whatever it might have been. And unfortunately, they both fell. Uh, They both listened to those lies and ate the fruit that God had said. You can have every single tree in the garden, basically Mm -hmm. on the planet, Mm -hmm. Just one I'm asking you not to eat. And that was so that they could constantly remember that he was the boss, not them, that he created them from dirt. And you and I are created from dirt. So we have to remember God is the creator and we are the clay pot. We are not the creator. And so that was just a reminder to Adam and Eve. And unfortunately, when they fell to sin, their relationship with God was broken. And that fellowship they had, the light of God that was in them, was put in darkness and so that is what we have unfortunately from the time of our birth amen and that is why thank god by his spirit he draws us to him so the fact that you know you were feeling like you were missing something in life what is there more to life you know there has to be something more that is god pulling on you he was pulling on you by his spirit by his grace because he loves every one of us so Like Rob was saying, you know, yeah, he was in different kinds of drugs and everything. I wasn't, but my heart was just as dark. My inner being was just as cut off from God because every every single human is born a sinner, and we're not sinners because we sin. Mm. We sin 
because we're sinners, because yep. we we're born, Amen, sadly, Amen. already, yeah, already separated from God. So that darkness was in him, that darkness was in me. When I was 17, I had, I didn't really, you know, live as a Christian very much. I mean, I did, but I didn't really know anything, even when I was mm. 17. And so I, I kept feeling, is this all there is? Is this all there is? And thankfully, two of my girlfriends, my Italian girlfriends from Catholic Church, <laughs> They had a friend who was at this Presbyterian church, and they she invited us to the youth group. And that was when I rededicated mm -hmm. my life because I knew as soon as I walked in there, all these kids were born again. And I knew right away, I felt like they were, they treated us like family. Mm -hmm. That's all I can say. They just treated us like family. And, and I thought, this is this is what I want, you know? And so uh, that was one of a rededicate my life. So no matter who you are, whether you've, been in church or haven't been in church or whether you have fallen back on drugs and things like this to to make your heart feel better about things that you've had to deal with and certainly pastor rob had to deal with a lot because having diabetes is no joke and having it in the 1960s was was definitely uh not yeah, easy very difficult that was like the wilderness time medically mm -hmm. i would say almost i mean it was probably worse before that but you know so the the main thing to remember is that jesus loves you he gave his life for you and john three sixteen says for god so loved the world <laughs> that he gave his only begotten son that whoever Amen. believes Thank in him you, shall jesus. not perish but have everlasting life so jesus is uh, the gift of god to the world he mm -hmm. is god's gift to the world he truly is he's his he is god's gift to you personally and his grace is just waiting. His blood knows no limit. <laughs> his blood is there to wash Amen. Pastor Rob. He had some demonic strongholds. That, that doesn't stand before the blood of Jesus, before oh, the name no, of Jesus. It, no, it no. all has to go. And as he was saying, you know, we still are real not perfect. It, it's a lifelong journey with the Lord. But Amen. his love and grace, if he gave his only life for us, how important are you? How important are you? To God, you are as important as the very life of his son. You have to remember that and know that because Satan is always trying to put down each of us, trying to make us feel that God is so disappointed in you, whatever. Well, you know what? God knew that mankind was going to sin one day and would need a Savior because it says the Lamb of God who was slain <laughs> before the foundations of the world. So when God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit knew they were going to create mankind, they knew Jesus was going to have to pay a price to buy us back, and they still Amen. made mankind. Amen. So nothing is more important to him than people. Amen. Very true. Very true. So here as we continue, it says, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. And then he says, Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And I remember walking home that night, and I looked up into the sky. It was like I was seeing with brand new eyes. I remember looking up in the starlit night that night. It was clear. That was June the 6th, 1980, which I was born again on my wife's birthday. <laughs> That's so interesting. So, so, you know, I was born again on that day, and I remember walking home while well, walking to my Aunt Betty's house that night and looking up at the sky, and it was like I was seeing with brand new eyes. I could not believe it. And it was just, I had this feeling like I could just fly. I felt like I could just get off the ground and just fly. It was just absolutely amazing. Now, we call that the honeymoon period because that does not last long. Because we all need to be discipled and trained as Christians. And I praise God that I had a wonderful pastor, his wife, and, and a church family that helped me. And I'll never forget the first day that I went to church that weekend that Miss Rose said to me, Robbie, she said, you need to be in the Word of God. And I had an old Bible that the little old lady across the street, her name was Mrs. Keys, and boy, she had the keys to heaven. She knew the Lord. She was a strong Christian and had her views about right and wrong and this and that and the other. She was the woman that told me. She said one day she would never turn her TV on except it was the news or the president speaking. Something important was going on. And it was a little old black and white television. 
And I was, I remember saying to her one day, Mr. Keys, why don't you ever watch your TV? Because I spent a lot of time with her when I was young. And she says, Robbie, see that thing right there? One day people are going to be able to watch naked people having sex on that thing. And I was like, you must be crazy. That'll never happen. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, what's happening today? Mm-hmm. It's actually happening. Mm-hmm. So, man, she was something else. But anyway, so all things become new. All things have passed away. All things have become new. Now, this is really interesting. Verse 18 says, Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. So, when we get born again and we have Jesus come into our heart, the Lord then gives to us this gift. It's number one, it's a gift of righteousness. And secondly, it is a gift of reconciliation. We have been reconciled unto God through faith by our Lord Jesus Christ. We're justified by faith, not by any good things that we could ever do, not by going to church once a week, not by saying how many Hail Marys or what have you. That does not stand in the eyes of God. The only thing that justifies you is the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. It justifies you before God, and it brings you into right relationship with God the Father through Jesus Christ. That is the most important thing. So given that ministry of reconciliation, then he says, and what that means, this is it right here, that God, that is that God, God was in Christ. Jesus, the Father, and Holy Spirit, they're all one together. They're one. They are one. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. And he said, we are one in him now. He talks about that in John chapter 17. And he says, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them or putting them on people any longer see everyone will give account to god one day even us christians we will stand and give account to god for our our works whether they were righteous whether they were done for god and all that that all those types of things but anyway not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed us unto us the word of reconciliation. Jesus said, preach this gospel. Gospel means good news. Go into all the world and tell everyone why I have come, what I have done. And that is what the disciples did. The disciples changed the whole world in the age that they were living in 2,000 some years ago. I mean, that's just amazing when you think about it. Then verse 20 and 21 says this, now then we are ambassadors for christ as though or just like as god were pleading through us we implore you we ask you you we beg you that's what implore actually means we beg you on christ's behalf be reconciled to god and i'm going to give you that opportunity in just a minute to do that God's speaking to you right now. God is speaking to some of you. In fact, there's somebody right now, you've been divorced in the past, and you are feeling very condemned about that. God has forgiven you. He has forgiven you. He has redeemed you by his, thro- uh, by his blood. I love what Titus 3, 5 says. Not by works of righteousness that we've done, but according to his mercy he has saved us by the washing of regeneration, being born again. Jesus said, no man can enter into heaven unless he is born again. Okay? He said, um, uh, anyway, Titus 3, 5, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he has saved us by the washing of regeneration being born again and the renewing of the spirit oh glory be to god 
or not imputing men's trespasses to them anymore. He's not holding against you. All of your sins are gone if you receive the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the only way. It's the only way to be redeemed. It's the only way to be made righteous before the eyes of God. You cannot do it in your own strength or power. It is completely impossible. Then he says in verse 21, this is the power pack verse right here that sums it all up. For he has made him, Jesus, Jesus amen, who knew no sin. Jesus never once sinned. He never disobeyed God. And he never failed God. Not in one little thing. Jesus was born without sin. So he knew that knew no sin to be made or to become sin in our place. Sin for us. Jesus literally took on the sin of the whole world on that cross. Man, what a powerful thing. That we might and the reason why that word might is used because it's your choice right. that we might become the righteousness of god in him that is your choice right now and i know that god is speaking to some of you and some of you somebody out there i don't know if you're a man or a woman but you've been divorced and you are feeling very deserted you're hurting you're hurting for your children. You're hurting because you've had a messed up relationship. But God is able to redeem you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Mean it from the bottom of your heart. Say, Lord God. Lord God. I believe. I believe. That you sent your son Jesus. That you sent your son Jesus. To die on that cross for me. To die on that cross for me. I believe Jesus. I believe Jesus that you bore my sin that you bore my sin every one of them every one of them when you were hanging on that cross when you were hanging on that cross Jesus it should have been those nails that were driven into my hands and feet Jesus it should have been those nails that were driven into my hands and feet you were not guilty you were not guilty but because you loved me but because you loved me you went to that cross for me you went to that cross for me so father right now so father right now i receive your son jesus i receive your son jesus to come into my heart to come into my heart and to cleanse me from every sin and to cleanse me from every sin i want to be born again i want to be born again i receive you now jesus i receive you now jesus come in come in come into my heart into my heart into the very innermost being of my spirit to the very innermost being of my spirit and allow me and allow me to be born again to be born again in Jesus name I pray in Jesus name I pray amen amen and we I, have our lawn being cut right now you may hear that but oh, we'll just ignore that and I want to share also this verse which which goes perfectly with what pastor Rob just prayed with you in Philippians 1 6 it says to be confident of this very thing that he which is jesus who has begun a good work in your life will perform it he will accomplish it until the day of jesus christ it's Hallelujah. not on you it's not on me we cannot walk this life on our own absolutely not we Amen. can only do it through the life of jesus in us and jesus told his disciples i am the grapevine you are one of the branches Amen. and the branch is meant to bear fruit but the branch is cut off from the vine what happens i prune my plants all the time it'll fall on the ground and die mm -hmm. so we must stay connected to jesus and what are the ways to do that pastor rob as we become a new christian what are the ways to to stay connected with jesus first of all you want to find yourself a church that believes in the bible i'm not just talking about some denominational church and not, not, nothing against anybody but one that believes born again. in the real word of God and teaches, thank you, honey, to be born again. And you can make phone calls. You can ask people. You know, if you need help, I'm going to give you my email address in just a minute that if you need help in any way, 
we're always happy to help you. But the next thing, like Miss Rose said to me, you've got to be in the Word of God. And it's best to start off with the New Testament. I was told to start in the book of John. And man, I went home and I could not put the Bible down. I knew something had happened to me because I tried to read the Bible many times, even the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't read it. I didn't understand it. But once you get born again, that word is going to be like God speaking right to the very innermost part of your being. He is going to radically change and transform you. The Holy Spirit has come to live in you, and he wrote the word of God. And it mm -hmm. says in the scripture that the word of God was written by inspiration, which means it was literally breathed Amen. into a human person who wrote the words down. Amen. So you have the Holy Spirit in you. He knows how to that's teach you right. God's word. And Jesus that's said right. he is your teacher. So that's a part of that new life. Amen. Amen. And that, that's a wonderful thing. That is just a wonderful thing. Well, I'm going to, before I pray for you, I'm going to give you my email address. The email that you can, email address that you can reach me on is Zion Freedom Fellowship. That's Zion, Z-I-O-N, Freedom, F-R-E-E-D-O-M, Fellowship, F-E-L-L-O-W-S-H-I-P, at gmail.com. That will come directly to me, and I will respond to you. So please, if you want to contact us, please do. Also, I just wanted to share with you that there is a, um, uh, in our link on the um, information, there is a place if you desire to give financially to the church and our work. We do help people around the world. We help people locally. Please feel free to um, use that PayPal address. We thank you very much. Amen. Yes, we do. And I just want to share one more thing, Pastor Rob. You were mentioning the, um, the honeymoon period with the Lord, and uh, mm -hmm. you said it doesn't always last that long. It depends on how long it lasts. Everyone's different. But I wanted to share, it, it doesn't always last simply because of this, that we have an enemy. We have an enemy. Amen. There is an enemy called Satan. Thank you. And he is not your friend. I don't know if anyone's ever told you, oh, you know, get into spells, get into this book, the Harry Potter or whatever else is, is popular. I'll tell you right now, the devil hates humanity. The devil mm -hmm. hates humans. He will lie to you. He will get you listening to his tune, uh, following some things he may want you to do. But I guarantee you this, he hates you. And I'll tell you why. He hates you with a cruel hatred, a cruel hatred. He Amen. is cruel and he hates True. you with a cruel hatred. And this is why, because Satan became Satan. He was originally an angel in heaven with the other angels. He was actually a very mm -hmm. important angel, not the most important necessarily, but there are many important angels there that serve God. But mm. he was one of the important angels. But do you know what was found in him? Sin and pride was found in him. And what Satan said to himself was, I will exalt myself above God. Well, he was a created being. God had created him as he created all the angels in heaven. Mm -hmm. And so Satan became prideful and wanted to be where God was. And as a result, he lost his place. It was an honored mm -hmm. place he had in heaven, mm -hmm. but he lost it and was cast down to earth. And he hates God more than anything else. But because mm -hmm. he has no power to hurt God, to destroy God, he goes for the next best thing which is human beings who are made in the image mm -hmm. of God. We are made in the image of God. God loved us. He made us in his image. Um, Jesus came in the image of humans who God had made and became one Amen. of us. And, and that's why he's our savior. He's the only one that lived a life like we did completely without sin and was able to give that life for our sakes Amen. and pay for our sins. So we don't have to pay for them anymore once you're in Jesus. So don't let the devil bother you with things like that. Say it is under the blood. Um, in the name of Jesus, if you have a Amen. problem with me, devil, go to go to my father in heaven, go to Jesus, because he has made me a new creature, and I have his name now, and his righteousness, and it's a trade-off. Jesus took our sins, he gave us his righteousness. So that's what uh, the, the honeymoon period Amen. means, is that sometimes the enemy will come, yes, he will try true. to uh, maybe defeat you, discourage you, um, make you, you know, think oh this isn't this wasn't real this wasn't Amen. real I can guarantee you yes it was real we've been walking with God for like four decades now and yeah. we've heard all those things too but you yeah. know what 
the Holy Spirit was always there to speak to us. God's word was there to speak to us. And yes. that's why a, a born again church that believes the word of God is, is who, who trusts that God is, that the Bible is truly God's word, that that word is going to sustain you because this is truly God's thoughts for you. And it's so important that you know that so that if the enemy comes along speaking something different, you can say, no, that is not, that is a lie. That is not what God says, and I don't have to listen to that. So, you know, there really is everything you need in this word Amen. and with the Holy Spirit in you to Amen. live that life for Jesus. And just remember, he loves you so much. He gave his life for you, and he laid it down, and he took it up again, and he promises us eternal life. So there's no fear of death, and there's no condemnation. So. Amen. Praise God. It's it's well worth it, isn't it, Pastor Rob? It sure is. You know, to know that when I breathe my last breath, I no longer have a fear of dying. Pam doesn't, you know, everybody that gets born again and comes to know Jesus in a personal way, the fear of death is vanished, vanquished. It is taken out of the way. Why? Because you've got this innermost witness in your heart that death has been destroyed. Jesus has the keys of death, hell, and the grave. He holds them in his hands. Death has no more power over you once you, became a, once you become a Christian. And you are born again, and your sins are washed away. They're washed away. Amen. And you know what? The Bible teaches us that God has removed our transgressions far from us and excuse me that he will remember them no more that is powerful because God is not going to condemn you for something that Jesus Christ paid the price for That's right. he paid with his life and redeemed all of mankind from the power of death hell and the grave yes. gone Amen. and Vanquished. he defeated satan in hell it actually says yeah. that he triumphed over satan spoiled his goods meaning that he took the righteous who believed in him who were waiting to Amen. get into heaven in a place that wasn't hell but it was it was under the earth it was a place called abraham's bosom and he spoiled hell and took all those who believed in him up into heaven with Amen. him Amen. and basically uh you know defeated satan's power over all those who know That's jesus right. it doesn't mean we won't make mistakes right but praise god Amen. this is jesus is in jesus is in it with you and with us for the long haul he is with us for the long haul he is with us through our whole life Amen. on this earth as long as we're breathing and then after we're breathing we're immediately with him Amen. it says absent from the body present with the lord so yeah he is with us and if we just stay in it with him there is there is no way we That's can really right. be defeated. That's we are going right. to know the Lord. We're going to walk with God. We're going to bear, uh, have a wonderful life. Amen. You know, it won't be a problem-free life because this Amen. world has problems, but it's going to be a beautiful life. And with Jesus, Amen. everything is is uh, is more wonderful, <laughs> as you said. The Amen. grass is greener. The sky is bluer. <laughs> and uh, you have a real purpose in life. You have a That's purpose right. for living. Very true. And, uh, and we know that we will live forever with Hallelujah. our Lord one day. Hallelujah. Well... We've been talking to you for some time now. <clears throat> so I'm going to close with prayer, and I'm also going to give you our our website address as well. Okay, so if you have a pen handy, get ready for that. I'm going to give you our website address. Um, there's all kinds of guest speakers on there. There are um, literal um, audio uh, versions of past messages that I've taught. And... All kinds of goodies on there that you will enjoy and, and, and learn and grow from. Okay, let's pray. Father, I thank you for the children of God, those that have just been saved and born again and washed in the blood of Jesus. Father, I pray for these individuals right now. And I also pray for all of those that already know the Lord. Father, aid them, help them. Father, give them supernatural strength Give them supernatural courage and give them supernatural spiritual gifts, Lord, that they will be able to be armed with the weapons of warfare that are not human-made, 
but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Lord, give your people mighty, valiant strength that they can overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Jesus, we praise you and we thank you. Father, thank you so much. Holy Spirit, comfort these new believers. Comfort those that are facing any hardship and trouble that they don't understand right now. Give them the divine ability to overcome in and through your power. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. A life with Jesus is worth living. Amen. Amen. Well, um, I'm going to give you the email address real quick, and I just want to thank my wife for being here. We'll do this again in the future. And uh, we've often thought about it, but we've never gotten to the point where we've done it. So I'm really glad that we were able to do it today. And I hope you enjoyed hearing from my wife and that the Lord ministered something special to you for what she had to say. Okay, here's our website address. It is www.zion.com. Freedom Fellowship. I'm not going to spell it again because I spelled it before. www.zionfreedomfellowship.org. And there you'll find our library. You'll find any upcoming events that we're going to have whenever we have a special speaker or anything like that. So we just had a wonderful gentleman visit us from Cairo, Egypt. And um, I'm going to ask my son if he can put that up on our website as well. So just want to thank you so much for being here today. May the Lord really richly bless you. And I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful day with your family and with your friends in whatever way the Lord may lead you. God bless you. As we say, Shalom Aleichem. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Amen. The Lord bless you. Thank you for being here with us, and uh, we enjoyed this time with you. We hope to do it again. Amen. All right. We say goodbye. We love you all very much, and we will talk to you all later.